Let's um, let's begin with prayer. Uh, Father, thank you for the afternoon. Thank you for that word. We do ask for help on uh, John Watkins and get healthy again. We do ask that we help the Grommers that are in Texas and people that are still in the Florida area that are still recovering from uh, this, uh, this hurricane with the loss of power. And uh, we do ask that we would help them to uh, be able to cope with the high temperatures and everything that's going on. While well, they recover as quick as possible, we do ask that they would, many of them would turn to uh, the scripture for comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's uh, go to Acts chapter 27. Acts uh, chapter 27. We'll um, be reading in verse, uh, verse 1. Uh, so, this page, uh, we have two verses here. So, Barbara, we'll start with you. Please do. This chapter is acknowledged as the most valuable document in existence concerning seamanship and English. Hmm. That was interesting. Very interesting. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into a ship of Abramidium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, when Aristarchus, the Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And join, uh, three, so the, four. Next, and the next day we touched at Sidon. And Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. Uh, and when we had sailed over the sea of Sylvia, what's that? Um, Cilicia. Cilicia. That's right. And for you, we came to Moriah, the city of the Lathia, and there the Centurion found the ship of Alexandria sailing into the Italy, and he put us there. All right? Good. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can we go on? No, no. Uh, next to Saturday, Mom. Yes. Okay. And when he had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were coming over against Sinistus, who had not suffered us, we sailed under feet over against Sodom, and hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens Nigh, where unto was the city of Lycia. Now then much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. He said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they may attain to Thenis and their winter, which is at the haven of Crete, and lieth toward the south, west, and north, west. The um, Mediterranean Sea is not a very friendly sea in the wintertime, even today, with the uh, even with, with today's abilities and technologies that we have, it's not a very friendly sea uh, to be in. Uh, and in this type of voyage, Where is this is the this whole thing. Mediterranean Sea, is this whole the Great Sea, this this whole this whole body of water here. The Mediterranean Basin goes all the way over beyond here, all the way over to, to Spain. If you look down here, you know this this map up here only shows down to the, the tip of Italy and Sicily, but then it goes beyond here. Uh, to um, Spain. That's probably a, a, good, a, a round number. It's, it's, it's likely about 2,000 miles, close to 2,000 miles from Jerusalem, which is way over here, as you, way over um, 
point from here on the eastern side of the Mediterranean, all the way over to, coming down here, all the way over to this part of Spain, it's probably about 2,000 miles. Is give, give. Spain? Oh, I'm going to start here in Spain. Thank you. Okay, I got too low. I was talking about last portion, but anyway. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, All right, I understand. I'm, I'm a little bit mixed up myself here. But anyway, <laughs> so we, we have we have we have Italy up here, and then there's over, way over here. We can't see it. There's Spain. There's a smaller map below here that does that does show Spain. I was just confused because I was videoing and it was. Okay. Just I thought that was Spain myself. Yes. No, I, I was too low. Um, but yeah, there's, no, there's two. But you're looking at a different map. There's two pictures here. And I was I was on the top map, so. So I'm just I bring this up just to say the Mediterranean Sea is a large body of water, large body of water, and in the winter time it gets it's very very, it's very very rough and choppy as we see here. Now these uh, these these men in this storm they, they lasted four over 14 days. Probably more than that, because they went 14 days without eating. There was probably still storm, stormy weather prior to their not eating. Something that they normal stormy weather versus abnormal storm, stormy weather. So when we look at verse one, um, so they were going to sail to Italy because, if you remember, Paul had appealed to Caesar. He appealed to Caesar because they wanted him to, for our various reasons, they were trying to get him down to go to Jerusalem. He was in Caesarea again, which is. Right there, Caesarea. I'm sorry. Caesarea is here. And um, they wanted him to go down to Jerusalem. And so there was, there was a plot on his life, uh, even before he, when he went to Caesarea, and at different times, they were always trying to get Paul. And so Paul appealed to Caesar. And so that's where he was going to go. He was going to go to Italy. Caesar was, Caesar was over here in Italy. It was over in Italy. And um, we see that the centurion that was um, in charge of him, his name was Julius of the Augustus Band. Uh, Barbara, question two, please. By what coast did they intend to sail, and for what city was Aristarchus? They meant to sail by the coast of Asia, and Aristarchus was from Macedonia, Thessalonica. Right, so this, this was their intent to go up, you know, by, by up here by Asia Minor, is up here. They wanted to come up here to Asia Minor. That was their, that was their intent. Um, but we see that um, some things didn't go quite as they intended to do it, intended to go. And uh, we do see that they, um, they came along and they. Um, Stopped at, at Sidon, and we, at, at Sidon, Paul was given liberty to go refresh himself. Yes. With is that what that is? Is that Yes. Uh, well, no. It's um. It says we can look over here. Right so. here. Is it? Still, is it still like fire? Yeah, fire and Sidon. Fire. Sidon. Up here, right there. Yeah, there it is, right there, Sidon. And um, as I, they, stopped, they stopped there in, in Sidon, and he was going to refresh himself with his friends. Uh, Joanne, you want to do question four, please? What did the vessel sail to the south of Cyprus? Uh, why did the vessel sail to the south of Cyprus? Because winds were contrary, or I guess they were rough, right? Right, so the winds, um, well, yeah, they were contrary, and so they... They, rather, rather than hugging the coast up here, they, they were forced because of the the way the wind was blowing. Oh, the sails uh, then, right? The, 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 the sail, all they had was a sailboat. The wind was blowing, and, and it wouldn't let them go that way, so they had to go another way. So they were planning to go north of Cyprus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they were, they were planning to go along, along the, up by Asia, up here, by Asia Minor. But the winds were contrary to what they were planning, so they had to go, they had to go below. They had to come... Uh, below Cyprus, below Cyprus, mm. and um, and so. Is that one of the routes, the, the dotted lines? Yes, that's right. One of the routes. Yeah, this 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 one with the uh, if you look at these these dots here, 
This is the entire. I, I don't have that much on, on this. Okay, let me get where you are. Um, over here, let me see the dotted lines. The solid dotted lines are here. Um, and so for some reason, these dotted lines don't seem to be in the right spot. At least there, there's something in the right spot in some places. Hmm. Um, so, so it's not going south or south or so. What, yeah. Because I'm looking for but they, they went, the no, the lines they, aren't going that way. The scripture says they went under, under Cyprus. Um, unless they're, they're meaning under is different than an army under. Um, they went under Cyprus because they went through contrary. Now, in verse 5, you see, after sailing over the Sea of Cilicia, um, and then they arrived at Lycia. Um, after sailing over the Sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, to what city in a city that they arrived, and they arrived in um, Mara, a city of Lycia. Now, uh, Jillian, uh, want to try question six? And question it's six. for verse six, yeah. From what city was the ship that was to sail into Italy? Where, where was the ship from? Um... Darren? Verse 6, the ship was um, Alexandria. Alexandria. So the ship was from from, uh, from Egypt, down here, um, down here, down here in Egypt. Is where oh, they're okay. they're and they were in that little purple area on the south, southwest Turkey. Yes. What were they down there in Egypt? I forget. Yeah, that's, that's where the boat's from. Oh. The boat the boat's was, was from here. You know, when we have, and they're down here in this area here, we'll see it. When it sailed from, where does it start? It started in Caesarea, I believe. Yeah. It says where Paul went. Yeah, Poseidon. Poseidon. Did they, did they walk up Poseidon? Or they, 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 they were they were they stopped the Poseidon. They should have um, um, the day we, yeah, they left up around. And so they went up to, and so, uh, in, verse, in verse 7, uh, why was it necessary to sail under Crete? Now, Crete He's way over here now. Um, I'm sorry. Is this, this is, sorry, not a problem. Greece here. Um, kind of in the, in the middle of our, our this map here. So Greece, Greece right there. And so, um, okay, again, it was the wind. Um, the wind would not suffer them to do that. Because they, they didn't set for them to go the way they wanted to go, so they had to sail under Crete. Um, there's different ways of sailing. If you can sail with the wind, if you sail against the wind, then you have to get to, you have to kind of go with an angle, like an attack this way, attack that way. What's your thought about, about I that? I just wanted to say that when we were going someplace, uh, maybe to Africa, I don't know, uh, when we sailed over Crete, I looked out the window and there was Crete. Okay. It was sort of exciting. Yes, that would be that would be exciting. Um, so you want to try verse, uh, question nine, please? Question nine. Yes, sir. What became of the conditions of sailing on the Great Sea? Sailing was dangerous. It was dangerous. You know, so and even today, it's in, in, in the winter time, it is, it is dangerous. Very, very dangerous place to be. Um, where, where is the sea on the map? That was the question before. It says the Fair Havens were close to what city in this city? Well, the sea is up and in this purple area. Oh, okay. Wait, is that the Yes. Mm -hmm. up over in that purple area. That's, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's, let's see. So we see here the condition uh, in the Great Sea was very, the sailing was very dangerous. Um, and so Paul, in verse 10, he says, um, Paul told them, you know, he says it's going to be very dangerous to go. We, we should stop where we're at. But, um, but Julius, the centurion, he, um, he listened to the owners of the ship and the captains of the ship, the people that were in charge of the ship. And they, they seemed to have the confidence that they were, they were going to be able to, um, to do it. They thought they were going to be able, able to do it and get to where they wanted to go. Um, but uh, Paul says it's not a good idea. Now, Tammy, do questions Paul, please. Um, which haven was less commodious to spend the winter in? Or to spend the winter? That was the fair haven. And which haven was more commodious to spend the winter? 
Haven at Crete. Yeah, Crete. So they didn't like the Fair Haven. They wanted to go to Crete. Which is funny. Yes. Based on the name. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. It is, it is funny. Um, now, if we look at um, let's let's begin some more reading here. I'm sorry. Well, yes. So which one was which which haven was less commodious to spend winter? The Fair Haven. Obviously not. The Fair Haven was the Crete was supposed to be better. Of course, they had to get there. That was the problem. Paul says, let's just wait here until the winter's passed, and then we'll, we'll go and continue on the trip. But they, they thought they could go on. He told everybody, he told the and then the centurion says, well, but I've talked to the captain, I've talked to the owner of the ship, and they think they can make it. Uh, so, to Phoenice was the, was the less commodious? Yes, the, that's where Crete was more, more, more commodious. That's right. I thought it was the Fair Haven. The fair, fair the fair Haven, I'm sorry, Joey. Fair Haven was more commodious, less commodious. Which haven was less commodious? So that was... Fair haven. Fair haven was less commodious. Fair haven. Okay, and, so and, and I don't know which one it was. It Was it Crete or Phoenice? There's only two. It's either Fair Haven or Crete. Right. The haven of Crete or the haven of Fair Haven. The, the Fair Haven. haven. Oh, oh, the Fair... So it wasn't Phoenice and the P-H-E-N-I-C-E. Neither one of them were... The no, they, they, weren't, they weren't being discussed. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were able to dock at Fair Haven... Um, and, um, well, Fair Haven is a town in Crete. For, for, that's right. Fair Haven is a town in Crete. And so, but then there was another part that wanted to go to better than that. Here, here's right here. Here's the Fair Havens. Okay. But they. Uh, right there. See that right there, the Fair Havens? Okay. So that's a city. It's a, it's a part of. Crete? Yes. Uh -huh. And so, um, uh, and you're right, you're right, Julian. They, they want, they wanted to go over here. And so that, 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 so the Fair Havens was was more was less commodious than over here in in, in Tennis. So that's where they wanted to go. But uh, as soon as they started moving that way, they um, they got themselves in a storm, a winter storm. Uh, so let's um, read some more verses here. Uh, 13, uh, the following. So, Barbara, please read the first uh, 13 14. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing fence, they sailed close by Crete. But not, long, but not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocliden, Eurocliden. Yeah, hey, you're 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 flying here. You're floating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we did one or two. No, we did two or two. Fourteen and fourteen. Uh, Joanne, fifteen and sixteen, please. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. After running under a certain island, which is called Gloria, we had much work to come by the boat. Which when they had taken up, they used helps the the ship and fearing these they should fall into the quicksand, straight sail and so were driven. And when and when we being exceeded we with the tempest. The next day, the, they lightened the ship. Go on. That's good. 17 and 18. Um, 19 and 20, please. And on the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tapping of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and most small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be safe was then taken away. I do too. But after long abstinence, 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 Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, we should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from Crete to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall no be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship, but of the ship. There stood by me this night the angel of God, 
whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and will God have given thee all them that sail with thee. And so we see here that they, when they were there, um, I think they, they have a little sense they, they were, again, in, in the Fairhaven area, and they perceived there was a south wind, a nice uh, friendly wind uh, for them to um, take, just go a little bit all along the coast down here to uh, Venice to play the place was more commodious. It's okay. Should I show it again? Oh, that's, that's right there. So uh, they, were, they were here, and they had a south wind, and so they were, they were going to come down here without any, without any problem and stay there for the winter time. But um, as we'll see, uh, they started this. We started out with a nice, nice, soft south wind that was blowing softly. Um, but uh, what, what, I mean, what, what they came up with a strong wind. What was the name of that wind, um, Barbara? It was typhonic, actually. We're thinking hurricane. Right. It was, it was very, very, like I said, a typhoon, a hurricane on, on the water. It was very um, rough, a very rough storm um, okay, uh, so, yeah. on temp or in verse 14. Okay. And for a very, very strong, very question 14, okay. which is, is, is at the moment is associated with the verse 14. Okay. Um, and so we see here, um, and so they were caught in this, this unsuspected wind, of course, it should have been suspected. They should have known the winter time was not a good time to be on, on the water. But they thought they could go that little distance from, from, from here to there. You know, for a very, very short, a very short distance, um, you know, a, little, a, little, a little over 50 miles on the water. Uh, but they got caught in the storm. And so rather than ending up here, they, get, they were driven away from the coast of Crete and... Um, and so they just decided to let the boat go where the boat wanted to go. They weren't able, they weren't able to control it, uh, so they decided to let her drive. That's what they decided to do. In other words, they just, they just, they may have, they may have lowered some sails, they may have loosened some sails, but they just let, let the boat go where the boat wanted to go. They couldn't control the boat. Here's up. Um, I have written down here from before when I read this a yes. long time ago. Uh, for the 15th verse, and when the ship was called, and could not bear it up the wind. We let her drive. This is why I wrote, this is what we must do sometimes in life. When trials come, we have to let them come. Okay. That's, that's good. Drive. That's good. That's a spiritual good. application of that. Yeah. yeah. So we can't, we can't hold, we can't control them sometimes. So we let them yeah, drive. Tam, Tam, your thought. And so you were saying that that means we just let the ship go. Right. right. Yeah. You know, you, let, would they pull up the rudder? They might, they may have done that, uh, or they may, have just, they may have just left it in place and just... It wouldn't, it wouldn't drive so much. Yeah, they, they, they may have done that. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't helping them anyway to have it down, okay. you know, but, but I'm not sure if it's possible to do that. Um, but, but yeah, you, they, may have not, they may have just ignored it the way they were the way, the way in control. Sometimes you can pull up. Well, this is a big vessel, over t- t- about 200... S- Close to 280 people, 276 people were on this vessel. I think, I think later they actually took the runner out. Later. later. Yeah, so they, I don't know, they could have pulled it up and put mm-hmm. Maybe they could have. I don't know. It depends on the type of boat, I guess, the type of vessel. Barbara. It's a Roman trader, mm-hmm. three to 400 tons, okay. the likes of which were not seen again until the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so it was a massive boat. Right. This boat was massive? Yes. Three to four hundred tons. Still sailable, right? Well, it was driven by sail. And probably oarsmen to a certain extent. But sail, definitely. Yes, that's right. Further thoughts? I just, uh, I love sailing. Mm -hmm. Tell me about sailing. Have you ever been in the Mediterranean before sailing? No. Lake Erie. Lake Erie. That's which could be, be rough time. Rough, rough. Sometime uh, around here. I can't remember. With Mr. Story and Mr. Sure. And the California. Down, 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 down in the bay of the ocean? Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, Dr. Wade's a very good sailor. I wish he were here to explain all this. It makes it so interesting. 
I just love sailing. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's very free. You feel very free, when you, especially when you're going fast mm -hmm. with the wind. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's well, they were going fast for sure. But I'm not sure they were feeling free. They were, they were feeling captive to this wind. But yeah, but, but generally speaking, feeling the freedom of, of, of if, you could, if you could control the vessel, that's one thing. But they, they lost control, the ability to control the vessel in its entirety, so they just had to let the vessel go where, it wanted, where the wind was going. And so it carried them, continued to carry them this way. Joanne. Well, we went to Italy, and we were on the Mediterranean side. Mediterranean's like a lake. There's okay. no waves. It was completely flat. Okay. Then we were on the Adriatic. The Adriatic had these waves, not like Atlantic City waves. Okay. There was just these little waves, I mean this big. Okay. If that, nobody would go in the water. They said it was terribly rough. <coughs> and we were all laughing because, you know, Atlantic City has these big waves. Right, these right. were tiny little ripples in the water, but nobody... Mm -hmm. None of the Italians would go in the water. They said it was so rough. So up here in the Adriatic. So yes. you were down which how, how? Well, we were across the Adriatic, right across from Rome it would be. Okay. On so the Adriatic, so around so the middle of it. You were right about here. Yeah. Okay. And then we were on the um, the Mediterranean on the Naples side, which would be a little bit lower than Rome. Okay. And um, and we were also on the, the Mediter Mediterranean side when we were in Sicily. Okay. Which is again is is like a lake. It's mm -hmm. just very flat. So, uh, but we were we were just laughing because we couldn't believe that they thought the water was right. rough. Hmm. So the Adriatic was still rough though compared to the Mediterranean. Yeah. Well, that day nobody would go in the water because they said it was too rough. And the idea was, I mean, the waves were this big. They were like ripples in the water. Oh, okay. They weren't waves like in the land. That was the Adriatic. Or? That was. The oh, okay. And the Mediterranean was even smooth. It was flat. It was like, oh. it was like a, a lake. Mm. Oh. There, there weren't any waves. Oh. Um, what they were afraid of was the Serta Sands, which were the north of Africa, Tripoli, which is the green section. You see Cyrene? Mm -hmm. That's where they feared they were going. And it's, they're very famous for their quicksand. It's all a whole beach of quicksand there. Wow. Well, oh. Okay. And they don't want to land. That's why they were thinking about landing into that. They don't want to land into that for sure. Um, so, yes. This is personal, but talking about this and the sailboat, and because of, uh, just thinking how much Grandpa Wade must have loved his son to buy the sailboat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just thought of the city here. Yes. Mm -hmm. It makes me love him. You know. He likes sailing with himself too, I suppose. Yeah, he would have rather had a sailboat, but Grandma was more afraid of sailboats, so they had boats with an engine. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess the big sailboats have engines too. They need to turn their engines on. Sometimes. They're huge. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, Joanne, did you do uh, question 16? Did I see you do that yet? What is the name of the island they passed under? Claudia? Claudia? Yeah, that's your Claudia, and it's this, this right here. Um, Claudia. And, um, and so the fear, like, like we said, like Barbara just mentioned, the sailors feared they were going to come over here and, and, and come into the quicksand over there, I guess, over in, in North Africa. Um, so they, um, and so they, again, they, they uh, almost seems like they, um, and they were split, they were driven by the wind. Uh, Jillian, uh, what happened the next day, verse 18? Verse 18? Yes. Uh -huh. um, they lighten they the ship, is that right? Yeah, that's right. They, um, and they get rid of some of the cargo and make the ship a little bit uh, lighter. Um, and so they, they make not some of the cargo, they probably got rid of all the cargo except you know, the food and stuff, food and water. Uh, they rid of all, all the cargo, all, all, all the, the light in the ship. And so, uh, on the third day, they started to task, toss over the tackle into the ship. There were types of ropes they needed to be able to tie things up or raise hoist things up. They got rid of the tackling, which is, um, which is very important. You always want to have some, some type of ropes for tackling on the ship. You, know, you, want, you always want to throw something in, onto the shore. When you're, when you're closer to the shore, to arrive and be able to be all tied up. 
when they docked. I mean, they use the technique other than just, just docking. They use it for hoisting the sails up. This would have been like, like we said, there was 276 people. 16, 276 people on this vessel. Probably could hold more people than that, but that's how many were on the vessel. And so it wasn't, it wasn't a small boat. Um, very, very big boat. And um, so, um, Mom, question, question 20, please. 20. Mm-hmm. Why was all hope taken away? They were in a, ten, a tempestuous wind. And they did thought, I guess they thought they would never escape it. And so there was a great tempest wind, and it was so, so great that it, it, it blocked out the sun and the stars. So it was completely black. And so, um, again, these, these are not ordinary people the, the, I mean, that are on the ship. I mean, there are some ordinary people on the ship. But the, but the people, hope that was taken away was based probably on the ones that were, had the experience of being sailors. The passengers who had experience sailing, too, probably. But, the, but the, when, the, when you have hope being taken away, when the sun doesn't come out, you can't navigate. And you can't navigate, you can't do anything. Uh, so uh, there was, um, and again, the sea was very, very rough. Very, very rough. Um, and so uh, then, then in verse 21, Paul tells the people, you, know, you should listen to me, sirs, you should hearken to me. I said, you should, you should listen to me. They should have stayed back at the third havens, but yet they wanted to go 50 miles, you know, to the um, Show me to the west. There was fair havens. Okay. And they wanted, they wanted to come over here. So they wanted to come over here just because it was nicer than nicer to spend the winter. In. Okay. Uh, but they they're having a real nice winter now, aren't they? Uh, they tossed all about and no sun, no stars, um, and they're, they're they're scared. And Paul says, you know, he said you should have listened to me. I told you we should have stayed back back at fair havens, but um. He didn't, they didn't want to listen to him. Yes? Couldn't you understand, though, uh, the owner of the boat and all those people that knew everything they had? But, and Paul was just a passenger. Yeah, Paul was just a passenger. We know that Paul had God's ear. But, yes, that's right. But those people didn't know. Yeah, of course not. I mean, but, but basically they started listening to Paul. Yes. Um, but, yes, you're right. I mean, the, the captain of the ship says, we can do it, no problem. Owner of the ship says, yes, let's do it. I mean, I'm not sure if they have the owner, the owner of the ship and the captain of the ship will communicate with each other. And uh, the captain says, there shouldn't be much of a problem. It's only, it's only 50 miles on the shore. There should be much of a problem. We can get there. Not a problem. Um, but they, they did know they were going to winter there. They were going to spend the winter there. But they wanted to go 50 more miles. I mean, after going through a little bit of a storm coming here, they wanted to um, just go uh, 50 more miles. And uh, but yet uh, they ran into some trouble, as we see. Barbara, you thought this was a ship of Alexandria. Alexandria was the port of the Roman Empire. Sure. They didn't just sail the Med; they went to India. Mm-hmm. So they were used to rough seas. They were used to these were not inexperienced men at all. No, no. They were highly experienced, uh, highly professional men at what they did. I just think it's interesting that God made it to the point where they couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's yes. why Paul was where Paul steps in with, with right. God's work. Mm-hmm. But yeah, these were these were not fly by night people. No, neither one. They were they knew how to operate that boat for sure. At least um under normal conditions. Right. Well, yeah. in normal storms. In normal storms, yes, that's right. Um Tammy, a question twenty two, please. What assurance did the Apostle Paul give uh, to those on the boat that their lives would be saved and spared from the shipwreck? And so what assurance did he give them? I just said it. Oh, okay. Yes. Were you not listening? I guess, <laughs> I guess I was I was too involved in something else. I'm mean, sorry, yes. Um, Yes, that's right. He gave them the assurance that everyone, their lives would be saved yes. and spared from shipwreck. Yes, that's right. Thank everyone, you. Everyone was silent. And then Mom said, oh, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you wrong? <laughs> and so, and the reason why, the reason why he could say this was in verse 23. Um, <laughs> is the angel of God stood by him that night and he told them that, um, um, 
everyone was going to be the lives were going to be spared. Uh, maybe not the vessel of the ship, but the lives were going to be uh, be spared. Uh, Barbara, one of the questions, twenty-four, please. For whom was Paul promised that he would be brought? Uh, Caesar. Yeah, that's right. Um, to Caesar. And he says, Lord God, have given thee all them that sail with thee. So let's um, read some more verses here. Uh, verses 25 and 26. Barbara, please. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me, howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found it twenty fountains. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fountains. So I'll use 29 30, please. Well, then fearing the least we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under the collar, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, right? That's right. Paul said to the centurion and to soldiers, except these abide in the ship, we cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the rope, ropes of the boat to let her fall off. Did I have to read another one? No, just give oh, it a minute. You're fine. You're fine. We're going to go. Well, we to switch to cameras. Change, you know, it shifts the whole, everything into the camera. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take me, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there is not a hair fall, there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, and when he broke it, he began to eat. Then were they of all good cheer, and they took also some meat. And so, so looking back in verse 25, we see that Paul rightly believed God. Like we, we need to believe God as well. As promised us certain things, as, as told us certain things, and we must, we must, we must also, um, we must also um, believe, believe God. Uh, one of the questions, 26, please, proper. Upon what was the ship cast? Um, it was to be cast upon a certain island. A certain island. And so it was kind of close to um, over here, close to this, this, this area. Um, so that's where it's approaching. Sorry. Let's hold it here for a moment. They were way over there now. Yeah, it's been 14 days. Oh. Um, and so that, that's where the certain, that's, that's getting close to a certain island. And they, it says in verse 27, um, again, it was 14, 14 days, 14 nights. And um, at, in the middle of the night, they, they, they sensed that they were close, close to land. It says so, at midnight. But it, but it wasn't Sicily, then, the island, no? No, no, that's uh, a that's fire, right? The green Mal- one is Sicily. Malta or Malita. Yeah, Malta, Monadini, Malita. Malita. So they're little islands, then? Yes, I mean, by, by comparison to Sicily, yes. Okay. Uh, and back of the ship to get back across the Queen in Cyprus. And, um, but anyway, that, that's, that's where they're getting close to. Well, and at midnight, at midnight, they're, they're sensing that they, they, they are, that, they, that they are close to land. Now, I remember um, uh, being on a boat a couple times, and modern boats, they would what they call a sonar. And what sonar does is it puts that sound, it sends sound down the boat ship forward, and then that sound bounces off the ship forward, comes back up. And it, 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 there's a mathematical conversion that happens, and you can tell how deep the water is. 
And so when they're, when they're sensing their close to land at midnight, at 14 days, um, we, we see in verse 28 um, that they found they discovered 20 fathoms, and the fathom is about six feet. Uh, and this is this is not necessarily the distance from the land, but the distance off the ocean floor, off the off the sea floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they're they're sensing they're, they're they 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 have they must have had the technology, maybe primitive technology, but yet it's, a, it's amazing they can do, do it. They will sound down and be able to determine by so many seconds for that sound to return how deep the water is. And so initially it was 20 fathoms and 15 fathoms. Barbara. They have ropes with knots on. It's another That's way of doing it. Okay. And um, they would have known that they were near land by the sound of the breakers. It would have sounded different. They would have heard them crashing sure. against the That's right. The they could hear that as well. That's right. And we didn't hear that. Um, well, that's interesting how they have a measuring device, like you said. Um, the Romans were very precise. Yes. That's right. Um, and so we see that they, they, when they come near the land, they throw, they throw, they cast out the anchors off the stern. The stern is the back of the boat. The bow is the front of the boat. Starboard is on the right hand, right hand side of the boat, and the port is on, on the left hand side of the boat. Um, and so this day they, they cast out the four anchors off the off the off the stern to uh, hold the boat um, in place. Um, they don't want they don't want to come off. They don't want to come be crashed against the rocks. And like I said, you could, the sound is different when you're near shore as well. Um, so Joanne, do a question thirty, please. What did some of the shipmen let down out of the bow or four ship? That's 2730. So then they cast more anchors? Is that it or did they? Well, they, they, were, they were pretending to cast anchors, Aren't but they? what they were really casting out, what they were really laying down was a, like a small little life lifeboat, lifeboat. Oh, so that's what the collar is? The collar is to see. What is it? It's the seat. It's this, this deception. They were pretending to throw an anchor, a anchor off, off the, off the front of the boat, um, but really they were lowering a lifeboat. Oh. It says when they had, uh, when they had let down the boat into the sea. So there's, there's a smaller boat. Oh. You're familiar with lifeboats. A very small, oh, yeah. smaller boat. So that's um, what they were letting. Yeah, they were letting because they, they, but they were pretending. They were kind of pretending it was anchors, but it wasn't. Um, and so Paul noticed this, and he, he talked to the centurion about it. Tim. Is that because they didn't want any of the prisoners to get into it? They just wanted to say that their own neck yeah. things. They wanted to get one. No, I mean, is that why they did it secretly? Oh. I think they... Maybe there wasn't enough light boats. So no, only they... Yeah, it's so possible. they do it secretly? Because there was, there was probably only room for... A few people. But nobody got in it. No, no one got in it. They were lowering it down. But my point is, is that the prisoners might have fought and tried to get into it. Yes, that's true. The they could have. They could have. We're, um, we're still in in verse um, thirty. Join uh, Barbara. I'm sorry. The uh, shipmen would have known better than anybody what trouble they were in. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and I'm with you that they were out to save their own neck. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so um. I'm not the shipmen were about to flee. The shipmen, the people who, the sailors who sailed the actual boat, who knew what they were doing, were about to flee out of the ship. And when they let the lifeboat down into the sea under the pretense of casting off anchors. Okay, I, I guess I finally looked at the next verse. I'm doing several things here at once. Oh, okay. It's difficult to, right. to always follow everything. And you're doing a good job of doing several things at once. Yeah, no, I I've been criticized a bit. No, 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 that's fine. It's, I, like, I like the job you're doing. I like the job you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. And so we're, verse, we're, still, we're about to look at verse 31. Um, and so Paul tells the centurion, he says, Except these remain or abide in the ship, he cannot be saved. And so the centurion may have not even been aware of what was happening. And so, um, Julian, what, what happens? Uh, do question 32, please. 32? Yes. What happens then? Well, 
What became of the smaller boat? Um, the soldiers cut off the, the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. Mm -hmm. And she just fell into the storm and it got washed away and so that way no one could use it. But nobody was in it. Nobody was in it. Nobody was in it. Um, <laughs> and so we see here that, that the, all the men, all the inhabitants of the, the boat on the ship, they gone without food for, for 14 days. Um, Eating nothing. It's a long time to go without food for 14 days. Yes, they probably were. It is understandably so. Um, question 34, Mount Chris. Uh, chapter, we're, not gonna... we're in chapter uh, 27. 34, Mr. Yes, Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. Okay, so he encouraged them to take some meat, and um, he also gave the insurance that none, none of them were going to be harmed. None, none of them were going to be going to die because of this, this uh, pending shipwreck. Um, and so in the presence of them all, when Paul has this, 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 this prayer, he took it, he gave thanks to the Lord, and he broke, he broke it, and he began to eat it. Uh, Tammy, question 36, please. Is there a backlight you can put on your camera, Tammy, make it a little bit lighter? Okay. Want a piece of gum? I don't know. I, I thought I pushed it back. Okay. There it is. That's, that's a little okay. bit lighter. I pushed it. I pushed it and did all the other things. Okay. Go. Okay, I that's very nice. I like that. Um, um, which one? Uh, question 36. 36. What was the time amount of those on this one? They were a good share. They were a good share. Um, and so uh, they, they also took some meat and got some nutrition, and they were uh, in the midst of a storm. They're in good cheer. Because Paul, they, they begin to believe Paul now. He says, God's told me everybody's going to be okay. Nothing to worry about. Amen. They were probably glad to have something to eat after yes. 14 days. Yes, they were. They were. Um, let's read some more verses from 37 and 38, Barbara and following. And we were in all, and we were in all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. Oh. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the main sail to the wind and made towards shore. And falling in, into the place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart shook fast and remained made it unremovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence mm -hmm. of the waves. And the soldier's counsel was to kill the prisoners, let any of them shoot, swim out, and escape. Don't, don't let them. Pat? That's good. That's good. Okay. And 43, 44, my place. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they should, could swim. That they which could swim cast themselves first into the sea and get to the land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. Okay, so a score we know is 20 years. You know, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, so that's, that's score is 20. So here we have three scores, 60 and 16, that's 76 plus 200. 276 people, 276 souls um, were on this ship. And, um, 276? 276. I think that's how that works out. Including Luke? Yes, including Luke. Luke was there too. Um, and we, see the we? In verse 37, we. That, that, that has reference to Luke being, being present. 
Um, yeah, Luke was here. Yeah, he was, he was involved in this, um, this whole, whole ordeal with the shipwreck and other, and other things. Um, it says, it says, we. Yeah, but I wonder in the very beginning. Um, well, we. Well, 27 1 starts out with we. So he, he, he left the fall from. Yes. In verse one. Verse one of chapter one. One or two or something yeah. at the very beginning, just like you did in Luke. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yes. It's a wheat ship. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Out of out of Alexandria. Mm. Uh, Egypt fed. Rome. Mm, okay. So, um, Rome City. Mm-hmm. Specifically. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if anything failed in Egypt, Rome starved, literally. Mm-hmm. So this was this was an important ship right. to lose. Mm-hmm. And so they cast the wheat out of the ship to make it again lighter. Uh, this is the, this is um, and so. Um, and so they discovered there was, there was a certain little creek. They wanted, they wanted to get, get into a little area where they cast the ship, kind of drive the ship into it, and, uh, and to, 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 to kind of push it there. Now, uh, Barbara, question for you, please. What did the sailors do once the anchors were taken off? They committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder and hoist up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And so they committed themselves to the sea. So they were, they were close enough to... Head towards shore, um, even though even though they're still stormy, they were able to help. And so the front the of the ship, the bow of the ship, we see here in verse 41, uh, where two seas met. They came into the place where uh, two seas met, uh, and they, they ran the ship aground. And the front of the ship, they got stuck, but the back of the ship didn't stay with the front of the ship, and so it became two pieces. And so the ship broke in two pieces, um, which... Uh, Joanne, question 42, please. 42? Me? Uh, you can do 44, Joanne. Joanne can do 44. All right. 42, 42, Joanne. I'm sorry. Right. What did the soldiers want to do to the prisoners? They wanted to kill them because they thought they were going to swim away. Yep, and if anyone gets, gets away, then it's their, their life on the line. Um, but the, but the, the centurion, uh, they said that the willing to... Um, um, they, 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 they trusted Paul, and uh, so they said that those of you that can swim, swim the shore, and those that you can't swim, hang on these boards and just uh, get the shore somehow. When the, when the ship broke apart, there were those that they made out of, they were, they made out of wood. Um, and so they were able to take those boards and broke a piece of the ship and be able to get the shore. So, lady, question 44. Yes. Question 44? Yes. Mm-hmm. How many on the ship made it safely to the land. Um, I don't see it. All. They all escaped. All. Okay. So all safe to land. Everyone on the ship, all 276 souls that were on uh, the ship. Um, and so we see here in Acts 27, verses 23 to 26. It was stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sir, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that, he, that he, it shall be even as it was told me, albeit we must be cast upon a certain island. Uh, my question 46, please. Prior to Stephen's sermon, what question did the high priest ask? And two, in what chapter the book of Acts? And then read the sermon. I think the questions are these things so. Yes, that's right. Acts 7 1. Acts chapter 7, verse 1. And so we see here, question 47, where in the book of Acts does one read of a sorcerer being smitten with blindness and 
what question um, did Saul ask him? Well, it's in chapter 13, and the question he asks in verse 10 is, um, Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Uh, Tammy, question 48, please. In which chapter of the book of Acts do converts to the way of righteousness burn their books? That's in Acts chapter 19, verse 19. And what was the value of the books that were burnt? 50,000 pieces of silver. That's right, it's a little very expensive uh, book burning. Many of them, which also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver. And that was found in uh, 19, you said? Chapter 19, Acts 19, that's right. Question uh, 49, where in the book of Acts did Agrippa express his interest in hearing Paul speak? And uh, how did he and his wife arrive? And um, what is her name? Well, that's in chapter 25. And beginning in verse 30, 23, we, the scripture says, And the morrow when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with great pomp, and was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captain and the principal men of the city, at Festus' command, Paul was brought forth. So um, Bernice was the name of the wife, and they came with great pomp, and this happened in, this is recorded in chapter 25. Uh, Barbara, um, let me try question 50. In what early chapter of the book of Acts did one read the first century Christian being of one heart and one soul? And I left my homework at home. And I don't know. I'm thinking three minutes. It's, it's close to three. It's in chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Uh, question 51. Where in the book of Acts does Peter remind his hearers that the apostle, his chosen witness, did eat and drink with the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ? And that's in Acts chapter 10, verse 41. Not, not, not to all the people, but unto witness chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, after he rose from the dead, attesting the fact that Christ was eating food after the resurrection. Um, what question was that? Question 51. And it was 10? 10. 10, 10 uh, 41. It was chapter 10, verse 41. Um, okay. Joanne, you want to try uh, question 52? In what, cha- oh, in what chapter of the book of Acts does one learn that Timothy's mother was a Jewess? And two, besides the father of Tim- Timotheus, who else had a wife that was a Jewish per the book of Acts? I thought Bernice, Bernice was, a, was she a Jewess? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wife Priscilla. Priscilla. Bernice, Bernice, Bernice was a Jewess as well. Oh, okay. Um, that's, that's, she wasn't anybody's wife? Yeah, she was Timothy's, Timothy's father's right. husband's primary. Bernice was Timothy's. Bernice was Yeah. Bernice, Bernice was, was a Jewess as well. Yeah. Okay. So but we it's have, not stated. We have Bernice and Priscilla, and we also have um, uh, Paul's mother, I mean, Timothy's mother. 24-24. Uh, 24-24. Did you, did you mention Drusilla? Did you mention? Yeah, Drusilla. And after certain days, Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess. He sent, sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith of in Christ. It's Acts 24, 24. And then in Acts 16, 1, the following, uh, then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewish, Jewish and believed that the father was a Greek? Um, Tammy, and then. Bro. He didn't give her name in 16.1? Doesn't give her name or it does? Uh, his, her name is found in is, um, is Lois, so they can find that in, the, uh, in, in Timothy. Uh, Tammy. Uh, Aquila, I mean, I know he was a Christian, but his wife was a 
And he and his wife were both Christians, but she was also Jewish. Yes. Okay, so... Priscilla. Sorry. Priscilla. But Aquila, his wife, Priscilla. Okay, you're right. That's true. Priscilla's, Priscilla's another answer. We've got Priscilla, Bernice, Priscilla, and, Lo and Lois. Mm -hmm. I think this, her name is Lois. Either. Yeah. yeah. Barbara. But the question is per the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's just stuff. Okay. Right. But there's other answers. Well, other answers, other answers work. One. But the other answers work in the book of Acts. Too. Right. And but there's still a specific that mentions that she's a Jewish. Right. Yeah. Um, we, we, can, we can know that. Um, well, it also says that there's some of us, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Not in Acts 16 1, but it says it. Yes. In the book of Acts. In the book of Acts. Okay. okay. Um, in what, this is question 53. In what, in what chapter of the book of Acts I mean, uh, does Paul give a testimony to what happened to him on the Damascus journey? What chapters? It's chapter 22 and chapter 26. Mm -hmm. Both these, both these I chapters. Have, I have nine also. Nine, okay. Nine is, nine is, nine, 22, 26. Sorry, 10. Luke actually gives Paul's testimony at nine. Yes, okay. Luke is saying it's going to be technically correct. All right, we do. <laughs> well, of course we do. Um, I didn't hear very well. Okay. Um, for the, those that have dead batteries in their in their hearing devices, um, it was Luke that, that recorded what happened and gave the testimony to Paul in chapter nine. In chapter what? In chapter nine. Oh, it was Luke. It was Luke's account of what happened to Paul in chapter nine. So that does, chapter nine doesn't work. Uh, chapter nine, it's, it's the, 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 his, his testimony is recorded, but, but Paul himself okay. is given in chapter twenty two, chapter twenty six. So if you have nine, twenty two, and twenty six, that's that's the idea. We know where Paul's testimony is found, whether it's given by Luke or by given by Paul himself. Partial credit. Yes, that's or right. Will, Partial. Or, or will it be just not enough? Right. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so um, and so question fifty-four, Julian, um, Matthew chapter twenty-seven mentions the field of blood. Mm -hmm. uh, where in the book of Acts is it mentioned, and why it is named such? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Who is from field of blood? Um, who, who is associated with the field of blood? Jesus. Did you say did you say Judas? Jesus. Um, it's, it's Judas is more having a great association with the field of blood. Judas. Judas. Judas is carried who betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, what what's what do we know about the field of blood? So we, we have we, we mentioned earlier the Luke God used the Luke to, to the human as human author human writer of the book of Acts and is a human writer of the book of Luke. And so we have in the, in the beginning of the book of Acts we have the former treatise of Philophilus of I've written to you of all the Jesus that they began to do. Um, and, and so we have here an account of something that's, that's continuing on. And so we have something that happened near the end of Luke after the betrayal. What happened to Judas? Hung himself. Hung himself. And then what happened? He fell down. He fell down. And then what happened? Mm -hmm. That's the field of blood. He fell down and then... His bowels gushed out. His bowels, I mean, there's, there's parallel he passion. Fell he fell headlong. He fell headlong. His bowels gushed out. And, um, and we see here that's called the field of blood. Akuma. And so we have, we have also... Um, the, the, he, he gave the money back. And the, the, the priests... They didn't want to take it. They didn't want to. They bought this field. And so this field was in chapter 1 of the book of Acts. So that's what they refer to as the field of blood. Yes. And so if we look at Acts chapter 1, verse 18, now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity, falling headlong. He burst his thunder in the midst, and all his bowels fished out, and is known unto all the dwellers in Jerusalem as much as the field that is called in the proper tongue, a calama, that is to say, uh, the field of blood. So this is the place where... Um, and, and what word, verse was that in? Acts, Acts so 1... one Verse 118. And so we see here in uh, question 55, in what chapter of the book of Acts did the angel of the Lord speak to Philip, the evangelist, and what did the angel say? Um, this is in Acts chapter 8. 
uh, Philip was one of the seven original deacons. And the angel of the Lord, in verse 26, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, and the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Um, Mom, question 56, please. Where in the book of Acts is the idea of unbelieving Jews stirring up the Gentiles, effectively making their minds evil, affected against the brethren? Acts 14, 2. Yes, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. There's, there's, there are, they're always stirring up in many chapters. We have them seeing them ag- being in agitators, being opposed to everything that Paul was going on with, with, with the minister Paul. Um, but in, and so we have here in question 57 is um, in what chapter of the book of Acts does Paul reveal that by a space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day Acts 20 verse 31 says therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears uh, Tammy question 58 please Where in the book of Acts did the Apostle Paul affirm that he can help Christians who blaspheme? blaspheme? In Acts 26.11, that was his first testimony before Felix and Drusilla. Yes. Yeah, I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even in the strange cities. In question 59, in what chapter of the book of Acts does one read of Theodius, and who was he? In Acts chapter 5, verse 36, For before these days wrote up Theodius, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to nuts. So it was someone that was... Um, Insurrectionists of some sort, but they came nothing. And so Gamaliel was saying that possibly these, these apostles were going to be, it's the same thing's going to happen with them. Um, so then who was he? He was a, someone that was, he was, a, he was just a, a troublemaker of some sort. An Egyptian. An Egyptian. A troublemaker was an Egyptian. Uh, Barbara, you want to do 60, please? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. Um, it's, it's in the same chapter where, where Paul recounts, not Paul, Peter recounts his, his vision. Not, not, the, not the chapter where he initially has the vision, but the chapter whereby he recounts the, the vision of the great chief. Later on and then in that chapter. Right around verse 18, that, that, that particular chapter we're talking about. I want to say nine, ten. Ten is when the vision of the great sheet happens, and he gives he gives a rehearsal of it in chapter eleven. Chapter eleven. Um, when they heard verse eighteen, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, "Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life." Question fifty uh, fifty sixty one. In one chapter of the book of Acts, does does uh, does one read? Paul's sermon on Mars Hill. And that's in Acts uh, chapter 17. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that all things here are too superstitious. For I passed by and beheld your devotion. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom ye therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. Joey, question 62, please. Um, all right, I'll go back to this, uh, 17. What, what verse was that? 17, 22, and 23. I mean, it's, there's the... There's the it goes down to further, yeah, but that's where it begins. We are just one read of Paul's trip to Antipatris, and what time of day was it when he went? Acts 23, verse 31. Then the soldiers, as it was, commanded them, took Paul, and brought him by night. So it was nighttime. Okay. 
that they went to the town there because of a um, plot that was uncovered. Right. Question 63. Who asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? And what chapter of the book of Acts did they ask him? Uh, this is in Acts chapter 2, um, verse uh, 37. Um, now when they heard this, they were pricked to their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Jillian, you want to try question 64, please? Um, who is breathing out the threatening and slaughtering against the disciples? And two, where in the book of Acts does one read about it? Um, I'm not really sure. It's the same chapter where Luke records of Paul's Damascus Road experience. So it's been Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and following. Okay. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of the way, or rather this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And so then here, in question 65 says, in what chapter of the book of Acts do Bernice, rather does, probably do, does, does thank you, she does, does Barnabas report that God purified the hearts of the Gentiles and has put no difference between us and them. Barnabas does this in chapter 15, um, verse, verse 8, following here, the scripture says, And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by, by faith. Um, Mom, uh, Tammy. Peter that's The problem is Peter. Um, Peter rose up in verse 7 and said unto them, Men and brethren, and then he goes on and is talking for a while. Okay, so does Peter. I'm sorry, I got the wrong person. Verse 12, the multitude kept silence, gave only to Barnabas and Paul. But not until verse 12. Okay, verse 12. So it seems like it was Peter. All right. What question are we on? 65. Yeah. So that's why probably maybe some people were distracted from the wrong person when they listed that. So it wasn't 15.8? It is 15. Oh. Okay. It is 15. But it's, um, it's Peter that's talking, oh. not Barnabas. Um, so, so we changed, cross out Barnabas and put Peter. Yes, that's right. That's great. And let me see your question 66. I'm going to try that one. In what chapters of the book of Acts is the prophet Agabus mentioned? And what was his last recorded prophecy? Uh, uh, I don't know what comes first. One of the answers is there would be a great word in the world. And then Acts 11:28 to. Uh, 2110 or 2110, not to the separate panel. Are any of those right? Yeah, so it's Acts 11 and Acts 21, and this is when he, the last prophecy that we need that's recorded in the book of Acts and the recorded scripture, I believe, is when he takes Paul's girdle and he says, This is what's going to happen to the man who owns this girdle in verse, um, mm-hmm. uh, verse 11, or verse 21. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bowed his own hands and feet. And said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem find the man that owned this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And in question 67, uh, it says, um, ask, the word hope is used about eight times in the book of Acts. Or is it used in the sense of all hope taken away? And what were the circumstances of all hope being, being lost? That was in this chapter, in chapter 27. Um, when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. So in Acts chapter 27, in the context, uh, context of a shipwreck. Uh, Tammy, question 68, please. In what chapter of the book of Acts does one read of neglected widows? That's in Acts chapter 6. And what was the remedy uh, to this problem? There was an appointment of seven men who were um, 
from the Holy Ghost and honest, were as honest before in wisdom when we became the first deacons. Yes. Certain tables. That's right. So in Acts chapter 6, verses 1 and following, in those days when the number of disciples was multiplied, there was a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then Paul called the multitude, multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among yourselves, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. It's Acts chapter 6. And um, appointment of, of the, uh, the, seven, the seven deacons. Question um, 69. Where in the book of Acts is the reader introduced to a young woman named Rhoda? Where was she? And what was happening there? Rhoda is mentioned in chapter 12 of the book of Acts. Uh, she's, a, she's, a, she's just a young maid or young, young, young maiden woman, young woman. And she's, she's, she's worried to do so because they're having a prayer meeting in this house and they're praying for Peter's safety, pray, praying for Peter's release from prison. And then Peter is released from prison, but miraculously by, by the angel of the Lord coming. He knocks at the door and Rhoda comes, they answer the door, and he, she recognizes Peter's voice and keeps the door shut, and goes back and tells everyone who's praying for him, and says, Hey, I just heard Peter at the door, I heard his voice. And they say, you're, you're a little bit crazy, Rhoda. He's locked up in prison. We're, we're busy here praying for him. They thought he was in his spirit. But anyway, in Acts chapter um, 12, uh, and Peter knocked, this is the beginning of verse 13, Acts 12, 13. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And she knew Peter's voice. She opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Uh, Barb, you want to try question 70, please? What man born in Alexandria had expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly, Apollos? Who was doing the expounding, Priscilla and Aquila, and in what chapters of the book of Acts can one read about him? 18. 18, that's right. 18. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogues, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded him the word of God more perfectly. Question 61. Yes. It's his chapters. Or chapter 18. Or chapter 18. And chapter 19. 19 one, he's yes, 19.1 and chapter 18. That's both those two chapters. 19, 18 and 19. Um, chapter subject question 71. Where in the book of Acts is one read of the governor beckoning to Paul, the apostle, to give a defense against the orator of Tertullius? And that's in chapter 24, uh, verse 10. Then Paul, after the governor had beckoned to him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been uh, many years a judge of this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Joanne, question 72, please. In what chapter of the book of Acts does Peter refer to the Lord Jesus Christ as the Prince of Life and what occurred moments before this sermon? It's in chapter 3. Remember the beetle gate of the temple. The lame man was healed. And this is, this is what happened right before this, this event here. Um, and when in verse 15, Peter's talking, But ye denied the Holy One and the Just One, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Um, So, Julie, what are some things you've observed from this, um, this, this voyage to Rome that Paul had in this, in this class? So, it's something that sticks out in your mind. Um, Any one thing that you remember from our discussion today? I remember when, when we talked about when they were sailing mm-hmm. and where they sailed. Yes. Me. Mm-hmm. I'd like to go there someday, I guess. Yes, that, that would be interesting. Yeah. And my question 73, please. 
Let's go, John. I can't read my reading. I don't leave the island. Okay. But I don't learn something. I can't, I can't read my reading. Okay, it's all right. So this is something you learned. Um, I'll tell you, question 73, please. I don't know. I just was impressed by Paul's spiritual leadership in the time of crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd been walking with the Lord all this time, but through the process of being with these, I mean, apparently Luke was with him, but we don't know if there were any other Christians. Mm -hmm. But he was praying before everyone and um, giving them uh, insights that the Lord had given him, you know, to try to direct them in the proper way, um, even though they weren't saved. And then ultimately, he had a tremendous witness to them. Um, because of his faithfulness to God. Mm. Yes, that's right. Barbara, how about you? Question 73. The thing that struck me is we get saved and we have the promise of heaven. And in between comes the shipwreck. Mm. That's right. God's going to get us there. It's just not going to be as smooth as we get. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Good thoughts? And enjoy it. Question 73. Well, what, what I got today was like these, um, these sailors that thought that they knew what they were doing and, and, and everything like that reminds me of those people today that are telling us that, uh, that God didn't create the world in seven days and they're supposed to be scientists and they're supposed to be, you know, no walls, but yet I believe whatever the Lord tells me mm. in this Bible. And I, yes. don't, and I don't believe that the world is a million years old and whatever else they say. I believe what the Bible tells us. Yes, we have to. We have to do that. We have to believe the Bible in its entirety. Um, more thoughts than anyone has from this, uh, this chapter? Father, thank you for the time we had to spend in Acts chapter... 27. We do thank you for your wonderful protection of the Apostle Paul and all those other men, perhaps women, on that ship. Father, we do ask that we continue to protect us in our life. Help us to have the wisdom and discernment to be following thee in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.